Hi, happy Easter and welcome to Remarkable Women TV on Easter Monday. I am Kelly Herrick and I am hosting this session um, which is going to be all about the power of colour and uh, I am going to just check in on my phone here make sure I am live and you can see me. Yes, I am live. I am live. I'm alive. That's great. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, just gonna do this, start, um, and then John, I know, oh, I am live and you can see me. Sorry, yes. I'm still talking, even though I'm talking. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Right, we're ready. We're ready to go. Um, I just wanted to talk to you today um, about the power of colour. I am Kelly Herrick and I'm an artist, a contemporary landscape artist. As you can see, uh, my work is extremely colourful. I am a colour magpie. I love colour. Um, and you can see my work on social media and on my website. Just search Kelly Herrick and you'll find me. So um, one of the things I want to give you today in this session is the gift of the power of colour. Um, it is a gift and I'm going to take you through some ideas around colour, um, how it works and our emotional connection, history of colour and do some little exercises and give you a little exploration to have at the end as well. So um, I hope that's all exciting for you. And when you join, do drop in and um, drop in and put a note, you know, what's your favourite colour? Drop some comments. I'd love to know because I adore colour and uh, there's a school of people and a school of thought as well that perhaps colour is scary or a bit naive or a bit childlike um, and there is definitely a, a sense that um, you know the, the monochromes and the blacks and the whites are very sophisticated or the Nordic look is very sophisticated um, and actually sometimes um, that can be quite damaging because people are frightened of colour, but colour means so much to us as humans and we're so biologically and uh, psychologically loaded, ready for colour. So even those of you who are frightened of colour, I bet, will still love a particular palette. So you'll perhaps love navies and greys, mm -hmm. or perhaps you'll love um, warm, earthy tones and um, really enjoy um you know sort of more muted tones but you will love color even if you love whites and blacks you will love different tones of whites and blacks and i bet you have a color that you put with that so yeah we are emotionally loaded to love color uh biologically created to know color and have an effect on us from color so as well as being an artist i've spent 10 years in my corporate career uh, being the marketing director uh, for commercial and architectural lighting companies so light and color are pretty much the same thing and light as we know is the reflection of waves from a surface of an object now the light um, that is produced helps us see color which is why under moonlight or old yellow street lights you can't necessarily see color oh my live video has ended okay uh, oh no, it just says end live video. Okay, that's good. Sorry, I was just getting lots of comments. Um, okay, we've got love oranges and purples and different things coming up. Uh, brilliant. Okay, sorry. I'm looking at it on two devices and I panicked then that I thought we'd finished because it did actually finish last week part way through. So this is the second attempt. So yeah, our, our eyes see light and our eyes see colour. And it's just about wavelengths of what hits the surface and what what goes back into the cones and rods in our eyes or the cones actually for color so here's an interesting fact that might bend your brain the color we see from a surface is actually the color that that surface rejects hmm. so the waves that hit that surface are absorbed by that surface and the reflecting color and light from that surface are what we actually perceive as color but it's actually the stuff that it doesn't like and it, it rejects so that's weird, right? So maybe grass isn't green and maybe sky isn't blue. I mean, 
right? That's crazy, but that's just an interesting fact. So we are primed biologically from um, spotting a little red berry when we were hunter gatherers to basking in the warmth of the sun or the fire to blue light you know this challenge we all have sleeping now with um blue light is the early light of the day and it absolutely pops our circadian rhythm our body clock into action gets us ready and gets us going and then through the natural light of the day that becomes warmer and yellower and it calms us down and gets us ready for sleep and then we all go in the evenings on our lovely blue light devices and blue tvs and blue laptops and do all this and then we can't sleep right so um so it's really difficult. Um, and what's interesting in the comments as well we're going to talk about is the uh, the attachment of emotions to colour. We're going to come on to that. Someone's put they love autumn colours. So I'm going to kind of talk about that a little bit. So the way colour works is not necessarily a long spectrum. It's more of a wheel and a fabulously talented brain of a person called Isaac Newton put this together. So this is just my little watercolour version to show you the colour wheel. And you can see on the colour wheel that all colour is interrelated. And if you are interested in gardening or food or fashion, home um, decoration, spray painting vans, whatever it is that might use colour, it'd be really worth you getting to know this colour wheel. So we enjoy colours that sit close together because they kind of feel... Um, close and uh, that they work together but we also really enjoy colours that sit opposite so you can see yellow and purple sit opposite uh, orange and blue orange and blue sit opposite and green and red sit opposite and that's what we call complementary colours so there is actually some technology and technique to how colour works and sometimes I just paint with colour using my eye and my mind and my emotions and other times I really do think about the colour wheel so I wanted to show you this one just make sure I can hold it up because it's all opposite isn't it when you're on here so this one um this is a painting of um stars over the bay and it's a painting of Robin Hood's Bay in North Yorkshire and it's the complementary colours of orange and blue and the orange for me represented the warmth of the hearth and home, the red tiled, orange tiled roofs. And the blue was this deep indigo blue of the sky and the endless ocean and sky and the mystery of that. And you can see that although they really pop against one another, the blues and the oranges, they actually complement one another and they sit really well together. And that was actually the inspiration behind that that um that painting as well as a fabulous ghost walk by uh, robin hood's bay ghost walk so please go on that when when we're back out and you go back up to robin hood's bay so so it's really interesting to think about how our brain how our biology um all works with color right um but what is also interesting is um thinking about how much we take color for granted so it was only really when the colours became mass manufactured, um, probably at the turn of the 20th century, maybe a little bit before, that, that normal people like you and me, we had access to all these lovely colours that we see around us. We, we take for granted we can go to our wardrobe and pull out that bright red coat or that we can squeeze some artist paints out of a tube or that we can um that we can go and buy toys for our kids in bright colors you know this was never really a thing until the technique of paint became um, mass manufactured and during uh, this lockdown period it's been really great to reread this book which is the secret lives of color by kessia st Clair. um and yes i did initially pick it up because i'm a color magpie and look how beautiful it is look 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 how beautiful this book is and yes i have scribbled in it i do scribble in books sometimes i know that might shock you um but yeah the secret lives of color is really worth a read it's so entertaining and so interesting she talks a lot about the techniques and where colors come from but also these little social and cultural attachments that we have to different colors um, and some stories behind them as well and that's really interesting because when you think about early cave paintings and greek pottery for example we would often use the reds the browns the blacks the yellows that we could easily find in the earth and over time certain colors have become really powerful because they're expensive and they're difficult to produce and they're difficult to keep stable so 
ultramarine, which is a beautiful, beautiful mid rich blue, pure blue, is a great example of that. It was so expensive. You think of Tutankhamun's mask, right? That's lapis lazuli, I believe, which is where ultramarine uh, comes from and the blues come from. Um, that it does represent the divine and in Christian symbology, it, it, you know, it is the Madonna's cover, head covering. Um, and in early Renaissance Italy, um, actually the commissioners of the paintings, the clients would buy the ultramarine and they would agree with their artists up front how much they were allowed to use because it was so expensive, it was precious. And yet we take all this wonderful color around us for granted. So I want to help you guys see the gift that we have of colour all around us while we're all locked in and locked in our gardens and locked in our, our little spaces to see how much the power of colour can help us in our lives. So there's always been a symbology or an iconography that goes with colour um, from, you know, the reds of fast food to um, the sustainable agenda with green and the green party with politics, with um, militia and army. There's always been symbolism. Um, and what's really interesting to explore is our own personal feelings around colour. And it was interesting that John, um, John said he really likes autumn colours. And um, one of the things that colour does is mark time for us. So like I said, the blue light in the morning to the warmer light in the evening or the dark night sky versus the early morning sky. But you can use colour to help you feel like in different seasons. So, for example, this painting of mine. Oh, gosh, back to front. I have to work this out. This painting of mine, um, I was in Derbyshire and I'd been on a big walk and I just climbed up out of Wolfcutts Dale, uh, which is near Hartington Village. And I came upon this bright yellow. Everything had been green and rocky up until this point, quite Derbyshire, Peak District -y looking. And I came up over this hill and bam, there was this bright yellow um, set of fields that had been harvested and they were quite dusty and the sun was really bleaching them out. And what was super, super interesting was using this and the bright blues of the sky really, really encapsulated for me this feeling of the hot, hot, sunny, uh, bright uh, August day. And it's by the use of colour and light and shade, but mainly by the use of colour that we can start to explore that. So if you have a particular love of a season or a time of day, then I'd invite you to use colours in your home environment, in your car, wherever you are, that represent some of those uh, lovely emotions. So like if you are like John and you love autumn, maybe that comes through in your interior, in your home. Um, and maybe that's what, you know, makes you feel happy. This is the power that colour can have. So colour changes over time um, and our association with colour changes a lot. So in the mid, uh, Middle Ages, blue was seen as a hot colour. Now we think of a hot colour as bright red. Yeah. And uh, in sort of the mid 20th century before then, we were dressing our boys in pink and our girls in blue because blue was seen as softer and calmer and pink was kind of bolder and perhaps a bit of an echo of the reds of the military coats and the kings and the popes and things. So things change over time and we have loads of names for colours now and you go back to some of the ancient Greek and they didn't really have a lot of names for different colours. So don't take colour for granted really, notice it and value it. And I'm going to play a tiny game for us, we're going to try and guess the names of some of these uh the, the colors of some of these names that have gone out of fashion um the first one is watch it or wash i don't know w-a-t-c-h-e-t watch it i would say it's actually a pale blue gray never heard of it let's see if we can guess the next one so the next one is puke now i know the color i think that's going to be but actually it's not puke is dark brown and i think the puke thing comes from the fabric or the way the fabric was treated from that color here's another one fulvus what color do you think fulvus is fulvus is actually dark orange and the last one which some of the ladies out there may guess with particularly if you've been bridesmaid dress shopping because this is still hanging around it's a beautiful color actually is chartreuse now do you know what chartreuse is it's actually a pale yellowy green. So it just goes to show that we, we don't have these in our language really so much anymore, um, that how much colour changes over time. 
So we've talked about how emotions and symbolism connect us to colour. Um, and the things that I wanted to help you understand and help you feel more powerful with um, is a personal connection to colour. And I just want to do a couple of small exercises with you. And if you feel comfortable, it would be great if you could close your eyes because we're going to imagine colour. If you don't want to close your eyes, that's fine. Just maybe have a soft stare off into the distance so you're not distracted by all these colours that you can see, particularly on my broadcast. So let's close our eyes. And let's imagine ourselves seated really comfortably. And you, you might be anyway. And we're going to imagine a great big piece of wonderful fabric. Now I want you to drench that colour of that fabric absolutely drench and flood it with blue and wrap that around your entire body so from your head to your toe all around your shoulders all around your body you are wrapped in blue in your mind's eye what color is that blue is it pale blue maybe a turquoise like the ocean maybe a lovely blue sky blue or a dark indigo or any other blue that you can imagine how does that blue fabric feel wrapped around you is the texture of blue shiny and smooth or is it warm and fuzzy now whilst you're wrapped in blue and you're picturing your blue in your mind I want you to think of all the blue things in your world from the blue sky to the deep blue sea, to blueberries in yogurt, maybe to your blue car or blue Lego bricks. Maybe it's the icy blue of Christmas and snow. Think of the entire spectrum of blue things in your world and notice all the blues that are available to you. And next, I want you to think of just one thing in your environment that is blue, that you love, that you like, that makes you feel good, makes you happy. I have a wonderful blue handmade vase in my, in my kitchen. So think of your blue item whilst wrapped head to toe in blue and see it from all the angles and notice all the blues that it contains, all the highlights in the shade. And really look at this object. Maybe it's something someone else wears or something else in your home. And see it moving or see it in light and dark. And just breathe that blue in and think, how does blue make you feel? Does it make you feel calm and peaceful? Does it make you feel powerful and energized? Really drink in blue. Now I want you to let blue go a little bit and I want you to take your fabric and I want you to wrap yourself, absolutely drape and drench that fabric in yellow. It might be bright, joyful, lemony yellow. It might be earthy ochre yellow. Or maybe the bright yellow of an egg yolk. Whatever yellow you choose, change that fabric to yellow and wrap yourself in yellow from head to toe. How does yellow feel against your skin? Is yellow shimmering like gold? Is it warm? How does it feel to be wrapped in yellow? Now think of all the yellow things in your world. From the bright warming yellow of the sun. To hay bales in the field. Rubber duck. Blonde hair. Gold wedding ring sand on the beach, daffodils in the garden, 
enjoy all of the yellow things that are in the world for you. And now think of the one thing in your home that you love that's yellow. Or maybe it's part of a thing that's yellow. Maybe it's food or something outside in your garden or windowsill box. Really notice the details of this yellow object and look at it in the shade and the light. See how yellow changes from the light of yellow to the darkest of yellows on this object. How does yellow make you feel? Does it make you feel happy and joyful, warm and content, energetic, sleepy? Notice your emotions and your feelings connected to the power of yellow. And we're going to just shrug off that lovely fabric and we're going to open our eyes if you have them closed and just take a moment to just note and feel the difference between walking past a yellow or blue object and taking a couple of minutes just to really feel the emotional connection and the power with yellow or with blue. This is something that is freely available to you all around your environment. Even if you're in a black room, it's still freely available to you up here in your imagination. And this is what I mean by the power of colour. It can be a powerful thing to calm us and it can be a powerful thing to excite us and every other emotion in between. And take some time to maybe do that little exercise with the colours that you're drawn to. Maybe it would be pink or maybe turquoise or maybe black, you know. Black and white aren't naturally colours, but go with it. If you want to think about everything white and everything black, that's just super interesting and really, really connect with those colours and see, see what feelings come up and what emotions come up. So on that note, here's my little um, exploration game um, discovery for you. Um, what I want you to do, if you're up for it, is to firstly find out the colours that you're drawn to. So sit and think about some colours or look at some colourful things in, in your environment. Um, and see the ones that pull you in. And um, for cat, it's oranges and purples. I mean, they're brilliant because they sit opposite one another very complementary almost opposite one another um, and like we said autumn colors so work out what you really love and then what i want you to do is inject some color each day some noted grateful color into your day that you can observe and that you can be happy about and be grateful to see and really really see it so it could be something as easy as um, some lippy or a pair of shoes you know some colored trainers it might be bringing uh, a plant in or some flowers in from outside or putting some fruit out that you would normally keep in the cupboard or the or, or the fridge you know um, it, it could be something as simple as actually taking some colors away so taking some things off the wall and just enjoying a really plain blue room for the day so your colors that you're drawn to might change during each day of the week and they probably might change during the day as well but what i would love for you to do is go and find the colors that you love and just make use of them find joy and peace and uh, excitement and happiness from them and put them positively in your environment move things around so you notice the colors of where things sit so you don't get this kind of wallpaper view where you don't notice things and actually take the time to put a color in your environment in a place where you perhaps normally wouldn't see it and really enjoy it and really notice the emotions that come up with it and really notice the power of that colour. Because whilst we're all in here and we're all locked down, all we have is what we have. So let's make our best use of it. Let's choose the power of colour, even in small amounts, and let's use it to invigorate us and to calm us and to, to make us feel happy. Um, Tell me how you get on with this one. I would really love to know. You can comment here on Remarkable Women or on my Kelly Herrick artist Facebook page or find me wherever online. I would really love to know the emotional connections you have with colour. Um, 
and it's free and it's fun and it would be so interesting to learn about other people in your life and what colors they enjoy and and how the environment reflects them so have fun with it feel joy from it and yeah experience the power of color in your life so thanks for tuning in and uh, i will see you again here on remarkable women tv and i believe we have a cellist playing later today so tune back in to feel the power of music as well and have a great great colorful wonderful week ahead and i will see you all soon cheerio bye bye